Good morning, church. How are we? It's 2024. Hey! I'm going to ask you to stand up because it's the first uh, Sunday of the year and to say hi to someone you don't know. Can we do that? Wonderful. Wow, now everyone's chatting. <laughs> I got everyone quiet and now it's chat, chat, chat. That's great. <laughs> so we've got a few announcements. We've got a load to get through. So if you want to turn your eyes to the screen, we're going to play two videos about Alpha and then the other one's from Claude about Share Jesus. because this is my fourth attempt now listen to this i'm with you for a bit of fun next sunday morning can't wait christmas over can't wait to be with you but why am i at holy trinity listen at the as the service finishes today i want you to go to the back of the church you'll see a sign up board put your name on that board as many as possible because the following Wednesday or is it Tuesday it's Wednesday <laughs> following Wednesday I'm beginning a whole series on sharing your faith and so it's really important that I know how many are coming because I've got something I want to give you something free so I need to know the numbers go and do it folks do it now in the break do it afterwards do it while the pastor's preaching makes no difference get up and go and sign it on the board that's the most important thing God bless you see you soon Life is for exploring. So where will your curiosity take you? You're invited to Alpha this new year. The best conversations happen over great food with interesting people. A place for the open-minded. And they're not quite sure? A space to ask whatever you like. Or nothing at all. Who knows what this new year will bring? Let's make it one to remember, where we grab all life's got to offer. We'll never have it all figured out, but that's all part of the adventure. Stay curious. Try Alpha. So Alpha is happening next Sunday. So if you've invited a friend, just remind them that it's happening next Sunday in the evening. And Claude is here next week speaking, so I'm sure that's going to be an amazing service. Um... We've got a few more announcements, so just listen up. So we've got the prayer gathering tonight, as usual. That is from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, we've got Messy Church Cafe. Uh, that's from 4 p.m. to 5.30. So if you want to come to Messy Church, that's from 4 to 5.30. We have our ladies' breakfast. Oh, there's a few wolves there. <laughs> a ladies' breakfast, that's on Saturday, January the 20th. 10 o'clock to um, 12 p.m., and that's five pounds, and see Paula for more information or sign up online. And at the very back, we have our giving station, which has actually disappeared. No, it's over there. It's right by the coffee hatch. So if you would like to make a donation to the church, utilize the giving station, which is at the back. Brilliant. Could I invite the band to come up? So it's a new year and we have a new sermon series which Steve's going to be looking into. Um, he's going to be going through Acts and it's the power. Let me see, what, what's, the ti- what's the title Steve? I've forgotten it. The power of everyone. It just slipped my mind. The power of everyone. And I thought what is a brilliant scripture to open the new year is, is this one in John 17. And Jesus is praying for all his disciples, all his believers. He's praying for us currently. And this is what he says in the garden. He says, I pray not 
only for these, but also for those who believe in me and through their word. May they all be one as you, Father, in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so the world may believe you sent me. I have given them glory, and you have given them to me, so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me, so that they may be made completely one, and the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. That's from John 17. Would you like to stand, church? Heavenly Father, through the, the busyness and the, the prospect of a new year, Lord, we come before you, your feet, Lord. We, we come and we, we worship you this morning. Lord, you say that you desire for those to be, for true worshippers, for those to worship in spirit and truth. And Lord, we want to thank you for your love for us this year. We want to thank you that your mercies are new every single morning. Lord, we want to thank you that you love us unconditionally. Lord, we want to thank you for your death and your resurrection. We want to thank you for everything you've done in the past year. And we want to give thanks to you in the start of this new year for what you're going to do. We have great expectations, Lord, that you are doing a new thing. And Lord, we want to thank you foremost for that, Lord. We want to thank you for all the things you have done in our life and all the things that you're going to do in this next year. So we give you praise and we give you glory. So Lord, as we worship, as we praise, Lord, I just pray that we will encounter you, Lord. Encounter you as a real person, Lord, who lives. Encounter you who is the centre of the entire universe. Lord, there is a throne in heaven and there is a man who is sat on that throne and that man is called Jesus, who is fully God and fully man. So Lord, as we enter in worship, may you make your, yourself known this morning. I pray this in the awesome name of King Jesus.
Hallelujah. Show us, Lord. Show us your glory. Show us your face afresh. Today we come, Lord, to ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. Fill us, Lord. Renew us. Just inhabit now, Lord, the prayers of your people as we gather in your name. You are magnificent. You are awesome. There is no one to compare to who you are, the bright and morning star. We welcome you and we stand and we bathe in the presence of yourself. Thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We welcome you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. What an amazing Savior we serve today. Let's just take our seats for a few moments. We're going to be coming back to worship uh, in a few moments' time. Uh, just before Christmas, um, most of you, or some of you, hopefully many of you, would have been there, uh, aware that uh, Joey and Abby announced that they were going to be moving on uh, from uh, uh, Holy Trinity, and they're going to be going up to uh, Crew, and they're going to be starting uh, a new ministry there, a new life, a new chapter, maybe almost a new book. I don't know, uh, in that sense. And, and um, clearly, uh, uh, that, that news was met with uh, sadness, as well as a great sense of joy for them as they're going forward, as they're, they're going to be renewing you know, uh, 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 themselves for a, a, a really new, exciting time in their lives and in their ministry. And um, so I've been journeying with them, and they've been journeying with me, and we wanted to make sure that we uh, obviously uh, did this as best we can. And next week, we'll be their final Sunday with us. They will actually be farewelling uh, from our church next Sunday. Uh, and, uh, and so bring an handkerchief if, if, if you feel inclined to do so. Uh, and, uh, and, and it seems appropriate that also Claude is going to be with us on that day uh, uh, under whose ministry, uh, you know, uh, certainly Joey came to faith, came to the church. And a number of folk in this church have been influential, I know, in Joey's life and his growth and his development. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to be doing something uh, next Sunday that will uh, remember that. Uh, this Sunday, though, we're having a dedication. Uh, it's not Joey being dedicated. Uh, it's going to be little Noah, and it seemed fitting and appropriate to be able to do that uh, uh, this week. Uh, a dedication, obviously, is that opportunity where we want to commit and commend, uh, you know, our child and our children uh, to, to God uh, and into His care, and that we're going to commit to pray, and we're going to commit to being influential in the life of a young person as they grow, uh, and I suppose that never leaves us. Some of us are parents at the age of the 80s and 90s, and kids still give us trouble, don't they? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes that's the case. So child dedication is obviously something that stems from the scriptures. Uh, we, we read about it in Samuel chapter 1. Uh, where we see uh, Hannah dedicating her little child that is a gift from God to her. She uses these words uh, in that book. She says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord answered my prayer, and so I also dedicated him to the Lord. Uh, as long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord. So this was the heart of a mum in the Old Testament, and certainly, this is certainly something that we do as a church. We, 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 we believe in dedication, that we can dedicate and we can have an influence over a young person's life. We also read about it in the New Testament where we see Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. They took the infant Jesus to uh, the temple and they dedicated him also. So in Scripture, we see that this is a scriptural Mandate, But it is important for me just again to enunciate the difference between baptism and dedication. Why do we baptize, not baptize children and why do we dedicate them it rather? Uh, the Bible teaches us that baptism really is only for uh, an individual who has come to that place in their life where they have trusted in Christ alone for salvation. It's those who have come to that place where they've accepted Christ into their life that they then go on to be baptized. In the Bible, we find uh, parents bringing their children to Jesus, and he held them, and he prayed for them, and he, he told us to welcome them. He told us not to harm them in any way, shape, or form, but he did not baptize them, and nor did he tell anyone else to baptize them. 
And so it's really important that we see that through Scripture. And the Holy Trinity believes that baptism is for those who have made that personal declaration for Christ alone for salvation. And when they are of a mature age to make that decision to follow Christ, then they are baptized in, by full immersion in water. So dedication in that sense is, sense is not a sacrament. It's not a means of grace for salvation or anything like that. Uh, salvation comes only uh, in and through the Lord Jesus Christ when we recognize Him as Lord and Savior uh, in our lives. So rather than baptizing infants and, and children, we as a church encourage Christian parents to dedicate their children uh, to God. Uh, and this is what we're going to be doing in just a few moments' time. Uh, <clears throat> Joey and Abby will be bringing little Noah to dedicate him, to say, we want this child to have the influence of uh, the scriptures, to have the influence of prayer upon their life, to be taught the scriptures, to be raised in the knowledge of who Jesus is. And this is what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 6 to 7. It says, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. So even in the scriptures we read that it's about being immersed and having opportunity to listen uh, and to come face to face with the scriptures in the journey of life. So this is the commandment that God has given us and this is what uh, Joey and Abby want to do today with little baby Noah. Noah's a great name, isn't it? I like Noah. I like all names. Noah just stands out, doesn't it? It's lovely. So, uh, this is something that the parents are going to do. And of course, we are going to play our part in this also as a congregation. Well, at least for another seven days. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a declaration uh, that we're going to be uh, of intent whenever we come across children. But certainly, uh, that will be uh, the case with, with Noah, as and when we see him in the days to come. And I'm sure that Joey's going to be coming back, you know, to say hello to us uh, as well uh, over the time. But without, obviously, the parents bringing uh, and, 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 and uh, dedicating and bringing Noah physically to us today, this is not going to happen. This has got to be something that comes from the heart of the parents to do that. The parents are publicly pledging themselves to obey the command of Paul that says, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Bring them up in the discipline and the instruction that comes from the Lord. So this actually is almost meaningless without the parents' desire to dedicate themselves to the whole journey of being godly parents. It's great that uh, Joey's mum and dad are here as well. We welcome them and any of the members of the family here to support them on this very important moment. But I'm going to ask now Joey and Abby and Noah to come to the front and, uh, uh, and join us uh, at this particular part of, of the service. You can give them a little ripple of prayers. It's great. <clears throat> <clears throat> Looking very handsome there. Thanks. Thanks, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> Noah, you're looking fabulous in your onesie. I've got, I've, now, I've, I've got a few things to say, not, not to you at this moment in time, but to your mum and dad. Um, uh, and there are things I would want you to respond to me. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I'd like you to answer them. We do. If it's genuinely something that you agree with, okay, which is really, really uh, important. Uh, if it's your intention uh, to present Noah to the Lord today and to pledge yourselves to raise him up in the discipline and in the instruction of the Lord, would you, would you indicate that? We do. We do. Okay. Do you dedicate Noah to the Lord who gave him to you? Do you pledge as parents that you will raise Noah in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord? Do you today promise to give Noah every possible benefit of home, education, and involvement in the church community? We do. do you today ask God's rich blessings 
upon Noah to guide, guard, and direct him through all of his years. You do. Obviously, you, you play a part in this also. I'm going to be asking you to respond as well uh, to this part of uh, this service. Will you, members of this congregation, be faithful to your calling as members of the body of Christ so that this child and all other children under your influence may grow up in the knowledge and the love of Christ? If that's your intention, say we do and stand with me at this moment in time. Woo. Now. What an absolute joy to hold you today. And I'm sure that as I pray that you will reach out maybe your own hands and say, yeah, I'm going to agree with what Steve's praying right now as we dedicate Noah Hancock to Jesus all the days of his life. What a privilege, Lord, to stand with Joey and Abby and especially Noah today. We thank you for the gift that Noah is to this family, but to the family of God also. We bless you that before he was formed in his mother's womb. You knew him. You fashioned him. You had plans for him. And today, just like Hannah, in the days of old, we come and we dedicate Noah to you. We ask your blessing. We ask for your presence to be with him all the days of his life. We ask for great wisdom for his mom and dad. The good days, the difficult days, may they know, your, Lord, your grace and your mercy. May they have the patience to be able to come alongside Noah, to give him the benefit of their knowledge and wisdom that comes from you. May they nurture him. May you give them the strength and the wisdom to do the right things as each year goes by. Lord, we thank you for this amazing life. And we would say, the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face and his countenance towards you and give you peace, Noah Hancock. You are a gift. And we bless you. And I commit you to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And he was as good as gold. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so, so very much. Please do take your seats. That's great. Please, everybody take your seats. I'm going to invite the, the worship team just to come, and uh, we're going to sing the blessing uh, together. You know, that great words that we've just read there from uh, the book of Numbers, uh, which is the blessing not only for it meant just be for ourselves, but it's a blessing that is a prayer for our nation, for our town, and um, for all our families. The Lord bless you and keep you. So we're going to stand together. We're just going to sing another couple of songs of worship, and then we're going to listen to the Word of God together, and that's going to be great. Great. Let's all stand together.
As we were singing, I just had a sense that we should pray for our pastors, for Steve and Nilf. We have others, but I just felt in my heart that we should pray for those two guys. So Steve and Neil, could you just come to the front and we're going to stretch out our hands and we're just going to pray for these two men. We thank you for these two men. Lord, we affirm their ministry in this place, Lord. Lord, we thank you for their leadership, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you're putting in them, Lord. But Lord, foremost, we pray for a reckless love for you. Lord, we pray for an unceasing love for you. Lord, we pray for a covering over their lives, over their marriages, over their family, Lord. We pray that your anointing would fall heavily on them in this next season, Lord. Lord, for difficult challenges and situations, Lord, I pray that they would know you as shepherd leading them, Lord. Lord, I pray that every single day they would walk behind you, walk in your footsteps, Lord, finding you in the place of solace and rest, Lord. Lord, we pray that they would just become saturated with you Lord that where they work where they see people Lord where whatever they do Lord they'll be saturated with the glory of God Lord that you would be resting on their life Lord and Lord for their ministry Lord I pray that you would increase in their life that they would decrease and that you would increase Lord Lord I pray for good health over this next season Lord in this next year Lord bless them abundantly Lord bless them with wisdom bless them with knowledge Lord and foremost of all Lord bless them with the knowledge to know you better Lord Lord we just pray and we stretch out with our hands and we say thank you for these guys thank you for their life Lord thank you for what they dedicated to thank you Jesus and this next year we pray and we declare Lord that they will have a prosperous year in you growing deeper in the knowledge of you in the knowledge and the wisdom of you Lord Lord we pray that that you would reveal yourself to these guys more and more Lord these men of God Lord Lord may we bless them as a church Lord with our words Lord with our actions Lord with our time Lord 
may we be dedicated to praying for them, Lord. Just as we dedicated Noah, may we dedicate these two pastors this year to you. And Lord, we thank you for you. We thank you for your life, Lord. And may your life shine through them each day. So Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. better if I'm turned, turn the electricians on. Um, obviously, I want to, in response to that, Ruben, I want is back at you. Obviously, every leader and other pastor and every person who's leading in the church, we, we want that to be the reality for every one of us in this coming year. So uh, I, I believe our children are going and our young people, have they gone? Have they, you know, that's, that's, hmm? Oh, they're staying down. Okay, that's great. Wow. Children, are you, are, you, are, you, are you going? Are you, yeah, that's great, great. So let's give our children a lovely round of applause as they go. We value them. They are marvelous. Well, if you're here today for the first time, we're absolutely thrilled and delighted. If you're new to our church over the last few weeks, then we're delighted that you are here. We are a family. We are ordinary people. Most of us, including myself, are broken and God's putting us back together. That's going to take a lifetime for me, but uh, the, 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 that's the journey that we're in. And uh, we like to see this is our front room, this is our house, this is where we welcome people, this is where we do home in that sense. So welcome to our home. You are very much part of it. And we are, we've entered a new year. I remember 2000 when we were all going to take the crush and everything was going to go wrong. That's nearly a quarter of a century ago. Do you remember 2000 when it came? You all remember where you were? But now we're 2024, and what's happened since? I don't know. Maybe God's been doing something in your life. Maybe you were far away from God back then, but now God has brought you close. Maybe you've been on an incredible journey with God. But I do know this, that as we start the new year, God wants to do something new. Always. He's a God of revelation, and He wants to do something in each of our lives today. And today, we're starting a new series. I'm very excited about it. I've pondered it. I've thought about it, and it's gripped my attention. It really has, and it's the power of everyone. You don't know what's coming. I do. That's why I'm quite excited about it. It's really good. Uh, the power of everyone. When everyone, when everyone's involved, when everyone's united, when everyone is together, something amazing happens within the scriptures. And we're gonna we're gonna read from the scriptures in just a moment in, in Acts chapter two, verses 20, uh, 42 to 47. But I love this principle of everyone. Everyone coming together, when everyone's devoted, something happens, not only in scriptures, but we see it also all around. Have you ever thought about the power of everyone in nature? Have you ever thought about what it looks like? Have you ever seen those ants as they're gathering food and there are millions of them just going out for one reason, they're all together to bring food back. And they're all united, you know, they're all crawling over one another. They're all bumping into one another, but they've got a common cause. They're all doing the same thing. They're all active in uh, providing food. They're gathering. All the swarm of bees. If you ever go, anyone ever, ever been near a hive? And you shouldn't be near a hive. They'll protect the hive. There's protection as the, the bees come together protecting their hive. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. But one of the most favorite kind of uh, aspects of everyone together I, I remember seeing uh, was when David Attenborough kind of used this analogy of the, 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 the emperor penguins in the Arctic. Do you remember that? And they're all there and it's minus 50 and there's thousands of these penguins, but they're not stood there isolated. They're all stood huddled together and the outside ones are walking round because they're taking the brunt of the Arctic wind, protecting all the others. So they go round and take their turn and then go back into the middle. And then the others start around protecting one another. power of when everyone comes together and gets it and understands it. We see it in sport, in a scrum. Anyone ever been in a scrum? Yeah, I used to, I used to play on the front row in the middle. I used to, I used to be the hooker. I'm glad we're not in America. It doesn't mean the same thing. <laughs> hooker means that you did that with your foot and you hooked the ball. Okay. And it used to be in the middle and the times when we used to come together and suddenly these eight, nine, ten blokes were you like a united lump of flesh. 
We're all grabbing hold of one another. And in places that you never thought guys would grab. <laughs> squeezing and pulling and suddenly we were united and then down we went. Very exciting. We see it in sport all the time, the power of everyone. I have to use the illustration of last year when Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday. We're in the, the playoff finals and it was the, no one had ever come back from a 4-0 deficit in a playoff semi-final. And for the first time ever, it's never been accomplished before. It will never be accomplished ever again. <laughs> it was my team as I sat and watched the telly. In fact, when it actually happened and when Sheffield Wednesday drew kind of 4-4, uh, they got four goals back. Helen and my daughters saw me do things in my house I have never done before. <laughs> Honestly, I was parading, no, I was jumping, I was running, I couldn't believe, I was screaming. I thought, I never did that when I got saved. <laughs> but I was mesmerized because the power when all, you could see a whole stadium of 40,000 people coming together. And it was just that sense of everyone. We were all in it. I've been in Kathmandu and I have I've got a little sticker on my car than when I used to live in Kathmandu. And it used to just simply say, Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of the Himalayas. And I walk back to my car one day, and there's a white guy stood there, and he's leaning against my car. I thought, what's this? And he walks up, I walk up, and I says, hello, mate. Because obviously he wasn't Nepali, so I spoke English. I didn't know where he was from. And he went, is this your car? I went, this is my car. He says, are you a Wednesday fan? I went, yes. And he went, we're all Wednesday, aren't we? <laughs> he did that. And I went, yeah, we're all Wednesday. <laughs> and he walked off. He waited for however long just to see a fellow Wednesdayite. Not an Elimite, not an AOGite, but a Wednesdayite. And he, he had this common sense of, I need to see this guy. I'll wait for this guy. He's in the, I don't know what he was doing there, but there it was. The power when everyone's together. We see it in church. We see it all the time in church. Those people who turn up, those people who give their time and attention, even this afternoon in messy church cafe and all different aspects. Say, what an amazing group of people you are. You can clap yourselves. This is true. You are. You're wonderful. An amazing group of people with a common purpose working together. And no matter who you are this morning or where you are from, every one of us has a place on the team. You have a place on the team. Not me, not me. You're never going to be the one that doesn't get picked. You've been picked. You're in. It's good news today. You say, I don't belong to your church. I'm not even a Christian. Good. You're still in. He invites you to say, come in and not sit at the back, but come and sit at the front. Great stars at the front today. Started at the back and now at the front. Over the weeks, we're going to be looking at one of the greatest teams, the winning teams in history, the New Testament church. It's amazing. We see the apostles who were with Jesus. They witnessed the miracles, heard his teaching, witnessed his death, stunned by his resurrection, amazed by his ascension. And the Holy Spirit comes upon them and suddenly they were all together. Everyone was together. Something was happening on that day. Peter preaches. He's not been to Bible college. You don't have to go to Bible college to be anointed to preach. You don't have to go to Bible college because in the Bible days there were no Bible colleges. Nothing wrong with Bible college, but they didn't exist then. It's because they were committed to the apostles' teaching that they grew. Nothing wrong with Bible colleges. Buildings like this didn't exist either, but we still have them. They're tools to equip us. 3,000 people got saved on the first day. Not bad. Everyone became involved. See, the whole church was passionate, and they were involved. And the church began to cause a disturbance in community. Rather than for sale signs going up everywhere on church building, these churches, these people, this gathering, this everyone came together, and they caused the disturbance in their world. The power of everyone working in unison 
is a powerful and a potent thing. Acts chapter 2, we're going to read together, verse 42 to 47. And it says these words, if you've got a Bible, turn to it. Anyone got an old-fashioned Bible? Great, yes, you hold it up. If you've got your gadget, get your gadget out. It says, the fellowship of believers, Acts 2, 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone. Who's that? Everyone. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostle. All. Say that again. All. All. That's everyone. All the believers were together. They were together and had everything, everyone had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to those who were in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. That's interesting. And they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord, because of this, added to their number daily those who were being saved. I want to be part of that church. Who wants to be part of that church? You already are. You're already in it. This is it. It doesn't get better than that than today. You're saying to yourself, I really do hope it does. Well, it can. Because God's working on us. He's making us. He's he's molding us. He's shaping us to become more like himself. But we see these things happening. There's awe, there's favor, there's unity, there's passion, there's devotion. People are being added to their number daily, those who are being saved. But at the heart of their success, here's what we're going to look at. The heart of their success is that they devoted themselves to four things. Devoted. Devoted. Four things. Apostles teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. Easy to say. But what does it mean? But this is what they dedicated themselves to. This week I'm going to be looking at the power of everyone devoted. The power of everyone devoted. Not one or two. Not three or four. Not a group. He says everyone. Because everyone has to go. We leave no one behind. Everyone goes. It's like Ignite when they go. And our youth when they go to Limitless. No one gets left behind. We'll find the money. Everyone goes. If they want to go. You, can't, you don't have to go. But if you want to go, you're going. Because we will make a way. What actually is devotion? What actually is it? Well, I've determined it as this. Devotion is passion plus perseverance. It's many things. But I'm calling it passion plus perseverance. Let me start very quickly with passion. When I first became a Christian, no one had to tell me to be passionate about Jesus. When I first became a follower of Jesus, I was radically saved. It was night and day. I couldn't believe that God loved me. I couldn't believe that God had a plan for my purpose. I didn't care about church. I'd never been to church. I thought people who went to church were a bit odd, a bit freakish, a bit weird. My dad said, you don't ever want to do that, son. (laughs) Right, dad? I had this understanding of church. In fact, I had no understanding of church because I didn't give it any thought. But I was radically saved. What does that mean? I went to church one way and I came back out in a different way. I was alive. Jesus changed my life. He transformed my life. And my passion was a result of how good God had been to me. I couldn't believe how God loved me and cared for me. I had a plan and purpose for my life. I was there. Every meeting. I turned, you know, my former pastor, Jeff Feezy, remembers it. He recalls it to me. He says, you came to every meeting. I was at the men's meeting. I even tried to get to deacons' meetings. I went to the ladies' meetings. I went to every meeting that they were. I was there. I'd walk through snow to get there. You know, meetings that were cancelled and I'd be waiting outside the door because I wanted to be there. Because my only understanding of showing my commitment and passion was turning up. I want that. I want to be that. That's what I thought as a 16-year-old. I still think that. I come to church not because it's my job. I come to church because he's done so much for me. So my passion is not because I'm a lunatic. It's because he's done so much. I can't understand how much he would love me and how much he gives to me. And so these early disciples were full of passion. Imagine the Jews had been waiting for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years for the Messiah. And suddenly in their time, at that moment, he's there. 
They've been waiting for him. And suddenly Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost and he says, He's here. He's here. And all the Jews go, The Messiah has come. They didn't go, Oh, great. Let's go to the building and sing some songs. Passion arose in them. Suddenly they understood that Jesus was the way, the truth, the life. Life was transformed. 3,000 people became Christians on that day because they suddenly understood. Passion, though, gets us going. That's what passion is. It gets us going. Come on. Oh, Steve was passionate today. Passion gets us going. Passion ignites us. But we need to ally passion with perseverance because passion eventually runs out. I don't feel like it today. I've lost it. I don't feel like it today. Oh, because then you need perseverance. That's why devotion is passion with perseverance. You need both. We live in a culture where there is a tenuous, a tenuous appetite for the immediate. We want it now. Our society is all about now. We want to feel it now. We want the experience now. That's what our culture is all about. The need for a buzz. The need for a quick fix. All of this is the now thing of culture. And if it creeps into our faith, then we're in danger. If it creeps into our faith, we are in danger because to be a Christian is not about the quick fix. Yes, we want the passion. Yes, we want the excitement. Yeah, but then, then there's the perseverance part. I want to feel better now. I want, I want it to work out now. I want God to answer me now. There's some parts of Christendom where people are clicking their finger to heaven. Now. As if we're telling God when God should be doing something. We want it now. We, however, are called to be a people who persevere when the now doesn't happen. When we would want it to happen. The Christian life is not a sprint. We all know that it's a... One or two of you use the word marathon. Marathon. It's a long haul. It's a long, difficult haul for some people. The word devoted in the original Greek means to persevere. To be loyal, to be persistent. So they devoted themselves. Yes, there was a fervent passion, but that passion was then translated into an ongoing persistence concerning loyalty to Jesus. In season, out of season. They devoted themselves to apostles' teaching, to prayer, breaking of bread, and to fellowship because that's what they did in season and out of season. Let's be a people who are both passionate and persistent. That's the encouragement as we approach this new year, as we're going into this new year. And then there's the devotion. Clearly, I'm not going to go into any depth in all of these because we don't have time. But the reality is that they were devoted. They were persistent. They were loyal to do a number of things that I'm just going to earmark And just drop into your hearts and spirits and hopefully allow the Holy Spirit just maybe to rattle something in our hearts today that we might hear. They committed themselves. They were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Now we could say an awful lot about that, but the reality is someone once said, either this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Your choice. Either this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from... I'll get around to it one day. One day I'm going to read a whole chapter. One day I'm going to read a whole verse. One day I'm going to do, read a word. What, we just need to get around to it. One day we're going to read the New Testament. It's not guilt or condemnation, but doesn't passion say to us, that's where passion is revealed. It's where passion is seen. Devoted they were to knowing the truth to knowing the Lord of the Word, seeing the Bible through the the lens of Christ. This is where our devotion, everyone devoted, all of them. Imagine a church where everyone is devoted to reading the Scriptures. I'm not suggesting that we're not. 
the encouragement is, let's continue to be, or let's start being a church that is committed to the apostles' teaching. Everyone devoted themselves to being immersed in God's Word, particularly focusing on the teaching of Jesus. What has He asked us to do? What, is, what, what are we meant to be doing? What is God's heart for us this coming season in this new year? It's all revealed to us in the apostles' teaching. So let me encourage you at the beginning of this year to, to determine to rediscover the Bible. Why not commit to devoting yourself to take hold of the New Testament and allowing the whole testament to take hold of you. Let it take hold of you. Let the truth of God's word soak into your heart and into your spirit. And begin a new voyage of discovery. Everyone devoted to the apostles teaching. An amazing truth. Lord help us to be focused on your word. In Jesus name. They were devoted to fellowship. I like fellowship. We like fun. Do we like fun? Blimey, a few of us like a bit of fun. It means a common and shared goal, something that we have in common. That's what fellowship really is all about, a shared or common goal. And I'm glad that when I came to this meeting today, that my hands and my ears came with me also. I'm glad that when I came to this meeting, that my hands, feet and ears came along. Because I'd look a little bit daft without them. Can I say, church, we... We are more healthy when all the members of the body work together. When all the members of the body there, we don't look quite as odd. Because if I turned up without my nose and my arm, look a bit odd. Can I say that we are designed to work together? We are better together. We are designed to function together. We are called to be together. We are the family of God. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are his body. And some of you may have thought this morning, shall I go to church? Well, no, because you already are part of the church. You're in the church. You're always part of the church. You don't decide to go to it. Right Right now, there are two billion people around the world, part of this community that we call the fellowship, who share with us this common understanding of coming together in and through the name of Jesus. It's the world's greatest fellowship. We are not alone. We are part of something that is global. And I want to celebrate the fact that that global church manifests itself in local settings. We are a local church, part of the global church. And there are millions of us. There are billions of us around the world. And I want to celebrate this morning the journey of HT and this local church that's seen hundreds, if not thousands of lives transformed over many, many years. We thank God for all that God has been doing through the local church. I want to say thank you for those who come. Thank you for those who have committed themselves, who are loyal, who are devoted, and have given themselves in so many different ways to so many things that the church has been involved with. Let me encourage you to fellowship. Let me encourage you to a small group. Give us the problem of everyone wanting to be in a small group because they are tenacious to have fellowship and have a shared values and understanding. Why? Because that's what they were devoted to. Every day. Could you imagine if I put a program on that said, every day we're meeting. Every day. We all say, we want a New Testament church. We want to be a New Testament. Okay, let's all meet like this tomorrow. That will sort the, you used to call it the men out from the boys. The women from the girls. Really? I remember going to Brownsville. Brownsville, USA, where there was a revival meeting, and it was an amazing time. It was a, a revival at the time, and we flew to Brownsville in the United States, and everyone was saying, we want the same revival in our churches. And this guy who was a deacon in the church where the revival was taking place was given like a 10-minute spot to say a few things about revival. He says, we have a cleaning team every day that spends four hours cleaning the church because it's used every day. We spend this amount of money on cleaning materials. We need this amount of money just to do this. And he went through lots of very boring, practical things. And then he says, do you really all want revival then? Because we all want that bit. But not who's going to turn up and set the chairs and do this and do the other, make it happen. Who's going to give? Where's the finance come from to host all of these people? 
Do we understand what we're asking for? Well, the fellowship came together and something extraordinary was happening. And time has gone. I can't believe it's quarter two already. Rats! No, no, you see, carry on, no, go home. Ooh, should we have a vote? <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Because uh, you can't exactly sneak out, can you, really? But fellowship, they were there with fellowship together. And they, 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 people, it was in the fellowship that people were able to contribute their own skills and their own giftings, everyone being unique, adding to that. Can you imagine that kind of toolkit of the fellowship? It wasn't just one guy with a belt, you know, walking around with all the tools on. He says it was the whole church ministering together, working together in fellowship together, doing all kinds of things together. I, 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 I want to use a testimony. I, I just only, I, there's, there are so many testimonies I could use of people in our church. But if you go outside that way now, you'll see uh, uh, 30, 40 beautiful new rose plants. And it's all been barked and there's all stones that have been, commit, been pulled up. There's a guy in our church who has spent months and he's picked up every single stone up to three feet down, picking them all up in the church, putting them in a basket, walking them around to the other side of the building and he's built a rockery on the other side. You're going to go, I've never even seen it. God. And it's their beauty. There's tulips have been put bulbs in. He's taken every single weed out all the way around this building. You won't even know him. If I said the name Derek, would anyone know him? One or two. Derek, you're watching. You're a hero. But the church is full of heroes. Those who come, those who do, those who spend time, doing that, that's called the fellowship coming together because they were united in purpose. There was a sense of when everyone does their thing, Makes me look so good. But it makes you look so good as well because then this is ours. It's his. Look at what we. Everyone can play their part. Everyone can be part of the team. They were devoted and they came together. Wow. I really don't have time to go into detail now of the other two, but obviously they broke bread. You know, where did they eat bread? Where did they do communion? This is in their homes. In their homes. You're, I want to be a New Testament church. Then in your home, with your kids, with your family, that's where they broke bread. And here's the thing he says, he says, as they broke bread, they were eating. They were always eating in the New Testament. <laughs> always eating. Thank God. They were always eating. Fish and chips, come on. Curry, come on. There's pizza tonight, come on. Eating. Is what they did. It was a commonality because Jesus, when they were eating an ordinary meal, we see as the Last Supper, we almost have atmospheric music in the background playing as Jesus is eating a meal. It wasn't like that. Oh, it was a holy moment. Maybe it was, but I think the disciples were hungry and they were all waiting to tuck in. They're all sat around the table going, who's got this? Who's got the wine? And Jesus went, hold on. Just a couple of things I want to introduce here. Oh, all right, you're doing what we're doing right now. Come on, food. Get on with it, Steve. Tea, dinner. And he's, and he's there and, he, and he's saying, listen, just whenever you meet together, let me just ask you to do this. When you're at home, when you're having your fish and chips, whenever you're doing it, he says, when you meet together in whatever context of fellowship, let's just say, Lord, we remember you. You're great. Thank you for all that you've done. Yeah. Why? Because he says, don't want you to forget. Because we're very forgetful. Who remembers my last sermon? Put your hand up right now. I don't even think I can remember my last sermon. Because <laughs> that's how forgetful we are. Who's lost your keys this week already? Some of you lost your keys. Some of you, where's that 10 pound note? We lose it. We, lose, we can lose. And Jesus is saying, just remember me. Fellowship is where they broke bread together. Why? Because... It exhorted people to remember what Jesus had done, not just at special times. We're not going to be able to have communion today, are we? Because we're not going to get around to it. But I think we are. Can I exhort you here today to remember him as an act of devotion when, whenever? The writer, well, I don't have time to say that bit. Let's just move on. Lastly, 
Are you pleased? I've just missed the whole page. <laughs> Lastly, they devoted themselves to prayer. Devoted. They devoted. Passionate, devotion, loyal, committed to praying. Wow, what, imagine if a church was devoted to the apostles' teaching. Everyone. Imagine if everyone in a church was devoted, devoted to fellowship. Join a small group. Join whatever group's happening. Yesterday, was someone firing pellets in this church yesterday? Someone brought an air gun. I'm only kidding. We came together as a group of fellas, didn't they, yesterday? And they were all sharing. They met together and they had fellowship. We should have fellowship. Listen, why not make this year? Invite me round for dinner. But that would be really selfish, wouldn't it? Why don't you invite someone else around for dinner? When? Next Sunday. Why don't we just do that? Because that's what they did. Like, come around. Look, we're going to eat. Don't need to be prim and proper. Don't get the breast silver out. Just do chili con carne. It's a really social meal. Everyone can just get involved. Just do something simple. Invite someone for a meal. Because that's what they did. Everyone was committed to prayer. The Lord added to their number 3,000 people because they were devoted and they were committed in such a way. You know, when it comes to Lent this year, we're going to be committed to prayer. We're going to do an exceptionally kind of involvement kind of, you know, gathering when it comes to the 40 days before uh, Easter. I'm going to give opportunity for the church to come together in many ways, you know, to pray. Not just to pray, to seek His face, to have opportunity to come together, to call out on His name, to, to, so that people around in this community can experience the love of God. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. Why? For 40 days. That's a long time. Yeah, I know. But why not? Because every day they devoted themselves to praying. I'm going to give opportunity. I want to do that. But you don't have to wait till Lent. You can do that now. You could even use tonight as the catalyst to say, I'll go to the prayer meeting. I'm not saying, please come to the prayer meeting because we put it on. But see, this is starting a new rhythm in your own life to say, Lord, I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to go on a new journey. I want a new rhythm in my life where I focus time to reading the scripture because I want to be devoted to hearing your word, to, to seeking your face. Why not? And if it's not going to happen now, when? When? So let that just be a challenge and an encouragement. The power of everyone devoted. What do you say? Right. Look at that. I've put pages away. My wife says to me, why on earth do you write pages and only ever just do two? <laughs> I don't know. It's called be prepared. I, I don't know. But they met together to pray. They met together to break bread. Please, I know that if you're here for the first time, you must think, what is this guy on? I understand that. Am, am I always like this? Not really. But there's a... Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I am. I'm going to break bread. And, uh, and I, know time, I know time has gone. I'm not going to say afford me an extra 10 minutes, but afford yourself. We can do this by midday. And if it doesn't, we'll creep over a little bit. But I want to invite you at the beginning of a year. We did it at the end of the year last, last week where, where Reuben led us so well in the fabulous word that he brought to the church. Fabulous, fabulous word. Give him a round of applause. But we're going to start because they broke bread. We know that's, do you think they did that in the New Testament with little cups? My goodness me. Can you imagine the Apostle Peter walking around with a thimble? What's that? Yeah, big glugs of wine and, you know, food and, you know, what, what, what have we done? Even the communion table is the wrong way around today. So I'm going to invite the service to come forward. And it's not that I want to do this as quickly as possible just so that we get it done. But there's an element of wanting to honor those people who are here today. And I'm not looking to take more time than I need to. But I'd like us to break bread. It's going to be the last thing that we do today. And we're going to do that as quickly as, 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 as we can. And what I'm going to ask you to do is the servers are going to give you a piece of bread. Just take it off the, take it off the tray and hold it in your hand. And, and pass the tray as quick as you can like a conveyor belt. Okay? And we're going to hold it in our hand. And it's a, rem it's a, it's a remembrance. It's an act where we're saying, Jesus, 
Not only am I going to remember this today, but whenever I meet with people, I'm going to, I'm going to, even if it's just inwardly that you're going to do this, you might want to do it verbally as well to those who are sat around your table. You know what? You're, in your home, you do whatever you want. It's your home. Why not introduce something where you say, let's just remember, thank you, Jesus. Communion together. So we're going we're gonna to take this out. We have gluten-free as well. If you need gluten-free, then that obviously is available as well at the front. So you just need to uh, uh, maybe come and get that maybe yourself just to save time. Uh, it's here at the front. But we're going to take together and we're going to hold together. Everyone was in. Everyone devoted. Everyone the power of when everyone does this. Next few weeks, we're going to look at power of unity. When, power, when people act in unity together. Power of action. When everyone acts. The power of generosity. When everyone's generous. We're going to see how the scripture just really shows us the potency of what happens when we come together in unity of heart, mind, spirit. But take a piece of bread and once you've got that Hold it in your hand. Even now, try to take your mind captive. Look at the piece of bread. And yes, I know it's just a piece of bread, but look at it and say, he gave himself. This is for me. He did this for me. He died. He gave himself. He was so devoted for me that I can only respond by being as devoted to him. He gave everything. What are you willing to give? He demonstrated his love. How does that work in your life? The demonstration of the love of God. He went the extra mile. What does that mean for you and I? He brought them all together so that they would never forget. How could we do that creatively in our own homes? That bread is, the, break, the breaking of bread is the symbol of the new covenant. It's a new beginning. It's a new agreement between God and and all of his people. I think all of us nearly are there. Does anyone not have bread at the moment? Just raise your hand. It's just quicker to do it that way. Okay, so there's some still to happen over there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It's just a very humble simple piece of bread that's all it is but what it means is the value that you see in it demonstrated by Jesus he said take eat this is this is my body I'm giving it body mind soul and spirit wholeheartedly 100% devoted Passionately, he gave it. The whole journey to the cross is called the passion. Devotion is passion and perseverance. Jesus needed both to get to you and me. To get to you this morning. If you're not a follower of Jesus, this is good news for you. Thank you. Thank you for your body that was broken for us. And we're going to take and eat together right now in Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. And as quickly as we can, we're going to give out the, uh, the little cups. Hold them in your hands. Uh, we'll collect them at the end, you know, but uh, as they're distributed to you, remember, if there was the choices of wine that you've ever come across, the most expensive bottle of wine recently sold for 1.7 million pounds. Let me tell you, this wine dwarfs the value of that. This wine washes away sin. It washes away the past. It washes away guilt and condemnation. It provides a way. It opens a door. It is a day where we can come and realize that God demonstrated His love for you and I that he gave himself, which meant that there was a body and blood that was shed. He didn't hold back. 
He didn't give 50%. He didn't give 90%. He didn't even give 99%. He gave it all. Everything. And without the shedding and without the, uh, the, the blood, uh, there is no forgiveness. There's no way. This is why we cannot merit. We cannot gain our salvation. We can't, through our good works, say, look at what I've done. The scripture simply says that our good works are really not good enough. They're like filthy rags. But this, this is the choicest of wine. What you're holding in your hand is a symbol of that. That's why it's Ribena. It's just a symbol. But Jesus said, I want you to remember what I've done. And when we've all got a, a cup in our hand, if there's enough, we're going to drink together. And at the beginning of this new year, we're almost going to raise our cups and say, this is for you to thank you. And as I raise my cup, I, I, Lord, I want to be devoted in the same way that this cup represents devotion to me. I, I, want to, I want to renew my passion and my persistence to be devoted to the apostles' teaching, to be devoted to fellowship and to one another, to be devoted to the breaking of bread whenever I re remember you and come together with my friends, that I'll not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation. And that I'll dedicate myself to praying, which means a relationship that I want to get deeper into with you. I want to hear your voice more than ever before. And this is, this is the cup that provides all of those ways because you were devoted to us to such degree. What else can I do then? Try to follow you in the same way. So Holy Spirit, I pray that as we, each of us now, take hold of this cup, that in your own way, in your own revelation, that you may just allow the truth of what we are doing to hit our hearts once again. Maybe for some people for the first time, God loves you. He demonstrates his love for you. He's given himself for you. And in response, we simply say, thank you. It's not enough. So that's why we offer our lives in accordance to Romans 12, where it says, what else can I do but offer my life as a living sacrifice for you? Amen. So let's drink together now in Jesus' name. In the knowledge, now that we have drunk, that one day we will no longer have to remember because we will see you as you are. But until that day, we will remember you. And we thank you for this new year and we commit it to you now. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for one another. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. And you can all go home. You can linger. And if anybody would like prayer, please do come forward, especially if you've got a bad back. If you've got a bad back... I'd like to especially pray for those with bad backs. Someone came to me earlier saying that I really want to feel that that's what the Lord's saying. If that's you and you've got a bad back, but anyone can come forward, I'd like to pray for anyone. So God bless you. Have a great remainder of the day. Tea and coffee and refreshments are there. Thank you for being with us. Anybody with a bad back? <laughs>